Hello, we will clinicians. This is Ali Nesen. I'm joined again by Dr. Emmanuel Alvaro, or uh, we will know the faculty and uh, a great endodontist practicing up in uh, Canada, uh, Montreal, Canada. And uh, Manny, thanks again for sharing some of the, your cases with us today. And this is, I guess, the last case we're going to be talking about, which is another pediatric case of of management of a tooth with a history of trauma. But here it's about the concept of preservation of the pulp and regeneration, which is as significant or as important, if not more important, mm -hmm. than treatments and uh, that involves root canal therapy and devitalization. So why don't you go ahead and uh, walk us through this case? Well, here, this is a seven-year-old, a seven-year-old, nine-month-old little girl who had a trauma. And I know at that age, they, the, the months really count. They want to be It does, because like, I mean, it, <laughs> I it is. want to be so, eight. So let's call it, uh, you call well, them seven, they're like, no, I'm seven. seven and a half, or, and, <laughs> and because they want to grow old. Exactly, quickly. right? Uh, tooth number 41, or the lower uh, right yeah. incisor, central incisor. Central had incisor. Had right. a prior trauma about 24 hours prior to this radiograph. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, Coming, she came in, and what I did was what we call a partial spec with a bioceramic putty, bio, which is a, a partial pulpotomy or apexogenesis, if you mm -hmm. like. So what we're trying to do is to maintain the pulp tissue vital in the root in order to have, in order to, so for the root to develop in length and in thickness of the dentinal walls in order, otherwise we're gonna lose it for, for fracture. So the completion the of the root formation, exactly. which typically is complete about a year or two after, within a couple of years or after full eruption. After three, four years, yeah. or sometimes even five years before you mm. get uh, full Complete formation of the root. Eruption. So the goal here is to allow that to, uh, to complete so that you can have more strength to the walls of the dentin and uh, prevent it. And also, if possible, why not keep the pulp alive. Yeah, keep it alive. That's uh, the that goal. was the, the, the yeah. at the AE, that's what they mentioned, like keep it alive. AE. Keeping it alive, that's right. So let me ask you a question also about the uh, the partial spec and pulpotomy. Can you just describe that for our viewers? What is it? Yeah. A partial spec is basically, let's say there's a carious exposure on a young patient, a young adult permanent tooth, not primary tooth, but permanent tooth, where either carious exposure where it's an irreversible pulpitis or a trauma, a recent trauma, or it could be a past trauma of about three, four days with exposure to bacteria and all that. What we do is we remove part of the pulp and we place a bioceramic over the pulp stump that we removed and then we put a permanent restoration on top in order to keep the vital pulp alive. Right. And of course, the, the bioceramic originally was MTA, which works perfectly fine. The uh, only issue with MTA was the presence of the bismuth oxide, which caused some, uh, which some staining yes. uh, in teeth, as well as the material handling was a little bit difficult. So now the newer materials, the bioceramic uh, putty and the putty facet, just help kind of get around some of those issues. But the question that comes up is also about the uh, the depth of pulp tissue that you need to remove in these cases. And is that relevant to how long the pulp has been exposed and the inflammation? Can you just kind of describe a little bit about that? If a pulp has been, uh, if there's a carious exposure and everything is nice and clean and aseptic, when, once you remove the caries and you have an exposure, all you need is removing just a little, a few millimeters of the pulp, unless you're doing a direct pulp cap where you don't have to remove any pulp tissue. But if there's inflammation, so you'll notice clinically that there's bleeding. And we call this a clinical diagnosis. Right. And so what you do is you remove pulp tissue with a diamond, a sterile diamond burn and, a sept and an aseptic technique until you reach pulp tissue that is not continuously bleeding. Right. And then from that point, you build up a bioceramic base covered with a, uh, a permanent restoration. On top of that. Top. The pulpal removal technique, however, is really important, uh, Manny. I'm sure, um, as you know, we want to have a fresh diamond burr uh, or a burr that will create at high speed so that it doesn't create torque. Mm -hmm. The key is not to disrupt or pull on the pulp. Previously, people used to do a pulpotomy with a sharp spoon, but that still creates a lot of torque. I think a high speed handpiece with a diamond burr with uh, fluid and, you know, sterile saline or something uh, that is uh, clean, not tap water. That's, <laughs> for, that's for a partial pulpotomy. Exactly. Where are you trying to do? What we're, doing, what we're doing is we're just shaving off 
a, just a little, a few micron, a few millimeters of From the, the coronal, coronal surface. pulp. Yeah. But if you do go for a total pulpotomy, right. going with a spoon excavator is okay. W total pulpotomy of where you're trying to preserve the pulp? Where you're trying to preserve Regeneration. the pulp within the canals in order to allow for the development of the roots. Right. And that's a complete pulpotomy. Yeah, I mean, pulpotomy. And then you put a pipe Exactly. I mean, These as long as you have teeth. a sharp spoon. A lot of times, yes. if you look at the kits yeah. where most of us have in the thing, the spoon has uh, been used uh, you know, far too many it's times. Good. It's fairly dull. Because the whole point here is, is you're basically spooning, or as you're cutting, that you're not pulling on the pulp. Because as you're pulling, then you basically are uh, re removing the, the, the odontal blasts from, you know, in, as a whole into the walls of the dentin, and that could be a problem. So the key is to, as atraumatically as possible, remove layers of the surface of the pulp uh, while still keeping it alive. So then after you remove that, what do you use the solution? Do you try to lavage the uh, the, the, the pulp with uh, what disinfectant? I, well, what I, what I use is, uh, I use 2% sodium hypochlorite, and I just go in with a gentle irrigation throughout the area where I where there's the pulp stump, and then right after, I clean out the sodium hypochlorite with normal saline, right? In order to remove all the residues of the of, of the sodium hypochlorite. And the key there, uh, Manny, is you use the sodium hypochlorite, but not too high a concentration that could actually be too cytotoxic. At the lower concentration, around two percent, so it could two, be decontamination. I use it 2%, yeah, and, supposedly uh, at around that percentage, yes. they can keep the stem cells alive yes. or whatever. <laughs> and and uh, then you remove it with saline, so you don't yes. have any, uh, any residues. irritating residues remaining. Mm -hmm. But more important as well is the presence of a solid rubber dam barrier and primary and secondary isolation. Would you agree yeah, with that? Definitely. You, have, you need the to The keys isolate. to get no bacteria, no bacteria in, the, in the area. Yeah. So then once that's done, then you can put your bioceramic, your putty. Right. You can put a layer of bioceramic in there. Yes. And what if it is a, um, um, what if you see a lot of bleeding? Is if that a candidate? A of, then if you see a lot of bleeding, that means that there's inflammation. If there's inflammation, you don't do not want to put your your bioceramic into tissue over tissue that's inflamed. So you, you have to go more apically and remove more tissue. Right. Until you reach non inflamed or clinically non inflamed tissue. And that's where you put your base. You place the body on that yes. point. And um Terrific. So, and, and obviously, it's, it goes without saying, but for some people who may have not seen this, if the patient or the tooth is necrotic or is partially necrotic, this procedure is not an indication for that. If this it's, is vital pulp yeah, therapy. Yeah, this is vital pulp therapy. Yes. If the tooth is fully necrotic, then in those cases, you would consider doing... Either in a, in a tooth that's very immature as in this little girl, right. probably the first step would do a regen. Regeneration, regeneration. right. And if that doesn't work out, then you would have to do a certain apical, an apical, artificial apical barrier. Apical barrier and technique a, and yeah. Know, canal treatment after Exactly. That. Yeah, terrific. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. In this case, this is 14 months afterwards, we noticed the nice, well, we noticed the restoration. Right. Uh, so what they did is they placed the putty before that. Yeah, the putty facet was placed, and the restorative dentist followed that up exactly. by restoring the top of the tooth. This is a fourteen-month-old right. radiograph. That's terrific. So they did a great job with the restoration, the restoration which is composite beautiful, alone. Beautiful restoration. They got enamel on in there. Yeah, that's really. <laughs> That's terrific. Nice. That's great uh, little shaping, and the apex seems clear, and root formation seems to have it's following continued. the neighbors. Right, so, which is kind of nice. That's what and, you want to see. Uh, here we have a 26 month That's old, terrific. and we see the formation of the of the apex and the enamel, the nice composites. And the canines seem to be erupting well in that yes, area. Yeah, so it, it seems like, like the, normal, uh, the yeah, the that's a wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, result. And uh, is that the final X-ray there? That is it? perfect. So 26 month recall and the patient's kind of following this up. This was just uh, that's uh, terrific. Last summer. Well, Manny, this is a beautiful case. I mean, this, this shows sound judgment and decision to um, try yeah. to preserve the pulp in this particular case where it has a good chance of being preserved rather than jumping in there and doing root canal therapy. Instance, in this case, one would be misled by the fact that it was 24 hours of exposure, 
but just because there's 24 hours of saliva exposure or the pulp, that only means that you should remove a few millimeters extra of the pulp. And, and the key here is the fact that the roots are open. When the yes. apical area yes. is open, you have vascularity. In a younger patient, whether you have vascularity and you have space, healing can take place like anywhere else in the body. The problem is when these cases don't work is in cases where you have you know, a closed apex in older patients where vascularity is not, the, or perfusion of the area is not quite as robust. And as a result, healing cannot take place as, as uh, predictably, correct? That's Would you agree with large, that? Large pops have a lot of collateral circulation. So Exactly. And that's why both regeneration as well as these types of vital pulp therapy cases work much better in younger patients with uh, wider open um, uh, apices. And uh, here, Manny, I think you did a wonderful job doing the proper uh, patient uh, triage, which is based on diagnosis. I mean, you know, it has That's to... It's all key. Diagnosis yeah, is key. It's key to all. Yes. I mean, you're, the, the primary thing about your uh, uh, success rate is primarily a function of your diagnosis and your treatment planning. Yes. You know, if you diagnose correctly and your treatment plan accordingly, you will have a higher success rate. Definitely. So that's a key thing. And Definitely. thank you so much for sharing your knowledge here with us. This is a wonderful case. Uh, lots of other beautiful cases you shared this morning. I think it was everybody at the program was very impressed with all your cases. And I look forward to having you back here so we can share some more of those cases and have you share some more of your clinical knowledge with our audience. Well, I love being here in Boston. Well, man, it's always a pleasure having you. And uh, Dr. Alvaro and I went to school together here many Many, years many ago. decades ago. So it's great to have you come back and share your knowledge with our residents and uh, with us. And I look forward to having you more here and uh, sharing your experience with our. Well, it's a pleasure. It's, a pleasure, Annie, Ali. it's always a Thank pleasure you. to have you. Thank, Thank you. you for being with us. I'm Ali Nisse and with Dr. Manny Alvaro from uh, Montreal, Canada. Um, and we urge you to save more teeth. Save more teeth. Keep them vital too. Keep them okay. vital as well. <laughs>